Welcome to the News with a View. Hey, it's time to meet an excellent panel to talk about topics that matter most to you, at least we hope. Uh, Mark Donfried, first time I'm meeting him. He's the founder and director of the Institute of Cultural Diplomacy. Mark, you've been a busy guy. Welcome to the strategy room. Thank you very much. I can't wait to hear what your uh, theories are and beliefs are and what you found out in Berlin at your conference with soft power. What's interesting is since January 20th, we find actually many in the world are speaking about soft power again, now that President Obama... How would elected. you define it? Soft power, essentially, power is getting someone to do what you want, uh, or getting them to cooperate with you. Hard power is getting them to cooperate with you through force. Uh, soft power is actually by attracting them to do what you want. In essence, I would say hard power is really results-focused. Uh, soft power is more about relationships, which in the end will lead to results. Uh, so I think in that sense, what we need also with Afghanistan is actually relationships. Uh, there's been a, a, a large focus on hard power. What can we do in the next four years or the mm -hmm. last four years, et cetera? Not so much of a focus on relationships in the sense, how can we sustainably bring this nation forward? That's, I think, exactly what's lacking. It takes time. It takes investment. Even though I'm director of the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy, I actually very often hate diplomacy in the sense it's all time. You're you know, suspended actually, at least a week. Uh, so, so <laughs> in that sense, what I wanted to say about that, of course, results matter, of course, action matter. But I think, how do we get to the point where we can actually talk with our friends and with our enemies? And I think that's what's unique, actually, since January 20th with the Obama administration. We can actually have discussions that couldn't take place uh, earlier. Where are our allies in Afghanistan? Mm -hmm. where, are they help where are they helping us out? Uh, what has happened since uh, Hugo Chavez, we said, will shake your hand and mm -hmm. not vilify you? He mocked him over the weekend, said, that he's naive and to that extent. What has Cuba done since we said, hey, do you guys want to have a wheel? Let's put that past in the past, and I'm open to talk. They have not taken advantage of that. Now, am I being, what has happened to Iran since we said we're willing to talk, and we didn't even, get, we didn't even side with the, uh, with the revolutionaries in that country. Mm -hmm. We said, listen, let that, pro we wouldn't even condemn the election. Mm -hmm. So would you say so Quite far, Mark, sure. are you vehemently disappointed with the lack of results from Barack Obama's revolutionary uh, approach. No, no, I mean, at first you have to put it into the context of eight years of a certain administration of a certain policy, uh, and what, six months? You know, in that sense, I think we have to put it into context, so I'm not disappointed. I was concerned at the expectations that were raised, especially in Berlin, uh, this love for Obama, in the sense I think the world expects so much from this man. Uh, but think of the legacy he's inherited, whether it's, you know, the economic crisis, whether it's the, the very unstable political situation. So if you put it into that context, I'm not at all disappointed. Like, he's really just beginning. And I think the one thing that he has achieved, which right. I think is quite significant, is actually respect in the sense he's beginning to build a track record of respect, authenticity, and having a certain legitimacy that we didn't have the last eight years. Uh, our relationships better with, uh, were good with Germany with Bush, right? I think, it was, Tony, I think it was two years ago, the positive public opinion of America and Germany was 8% and Iran was 22%. Uh, I think there you can see how that relationship suffered. Uh, Transatlantic relationships were two really years weak. Ago? Uh, were really weak in particular, though, I mean, it sort of de degraded right. there. But Merkel and Bush were tight. In that sense, there's a positive right. potential there. Yeah. Blair and Bush yeah. were tight, even but though they but projected the not to be. Between the two. So right. I think there, in that sense, I think we, we need to pay attention to our friends and our enemies. And I think there was sort of an ignoring right. factor of our friends. And so Sarkozy I, and Bush were tight. And there comes uh, Chirac, who is a bitter enemy. He's out. And Sarkozy, the first thing he did is come to America and went to Mount Vernon and said, can you meet me there, Mr. President? They ended up being pretty good friends. I think the key thing that you could I think definitely say, and I'm sure you'd agree with me on the last eight years, it was about unilateralism. It was not about partnerships. Yeah. So what constructive things did America do with Europe uh, the last eight years? What, they, what were they looking for? In terms, they of want global, more in terms of Afghanistan, Iraq, et cetera, in the sense, where can you say, all right, there was a partnership that worked? Not only in terms of achieving results on four years or eight years, but in terms of sustainability. Especially now in the economic crisis, America needs partners. They need partners they can depend on. And I think we have not seen in the last eight years or today that partner emerge. I think there's a very strong potential for Germany as really the economic superpower of Europe to step up to the plate. Uh, they haven't stepped up to the plate yet, so I recognize that. Uh, on the other hand, to flip the question back to you, what have we achieved the last eight years? Is the world more stable politically? Uh, is the world stronger economically. If you look at it in that sense, in terms of when you were arguing, okay, there were no partnerships that worked, uh, but what have we